Watch out! Apollo Justice Ace Attorney is a game that has been rated T by the ESRB content rating system due to it featuring mild blood, suggestive themes, and violent references? Whatever those are. Oh well, viewer discretion is advised for this Let's Play series. Hey there, Artie! I'm Marty. Welcome to the final part of Apollo Justice Ace <laughs> Attorney. <laughs> it's also Apollo? Phoenix Wright Apollo, Apollo. Justice Ace That's Attorney the because we played as Phoenix Wright for most of this case. <laughs> I have been looking forward to and preparing for this trial since the first game we played, basically. What? <laughs> this okay. Is, okay, so this is one of my favorite trials. This is also, like, a lot of people A lot of people don't like this trial uh, for oh. a couple reasons. It's really short. Right. And it might be one of the <clears throat> easiest trials in the whole series. <laughs> you had to jump through so many loops to get to the Because we basically trial, know everything that has happened now. Yeah. And it's basically, just, and, like, we were just, just like, all right, we'll prove it. There are... It is so short, and you barely have to do anything. Most of this trial is just automated and, like, text, which a okay. lot of people don't like. But it's but so I, epic, I, it doesn't even matter. I'm a fan of visual novels. Yeah, so All right, let's go. go. If you've even stuck with us this long, I can't believe it. Welcome to court. Seven years, all leading to one verdict. A verdict which you must decide. Is the defendant Vera Misham innocent or guilty? The courtroom doors are opening. The trial awaits. Are you ready to begin? I swear, if it's gonna be something like, oh, Christoph Gavin was just complete. Uh, Christoph Gavin was just possessing. Jafar. <laughs> yeah. Well. <laughs> no, that couldn't work. <laughs> He's so stupid if it could. So, does um Zach? also have this power of no, the grammary. No. He does not. Okay, so you don't, you don't get it through marriage. No, you get it through blood. You get it through blood. Okay, then that completely disregards okay, this. Okay, cool. Because, oh my god. Something inside me. Rising. Surfacing. This is cool. Oh, good visuals. Something important. Lost long ago. It's close now. So close. October 9th, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number three. No defendant lobby. Court is now in session for the trial of Vera Misham. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Prosecution's ready to rock. Prosecutor Gavin, how is the defendant Vera Misham's condition? Acute atroquinine poisoning, according to her physician, she could die at any time. Thus, her absence from the courtroom today. What? They can't put her on trial without her being here. It is unusual. They should wait for her to get better and do it then. It's so bureaucratic of them. Bureaucratic. Bureaucratic of them. That's being a little harsh. They can't delay the trial any longer or they risk having no one left to try. A trial without a verdict can only cause grief. The records of this case and experience tell us this. It's a thing of DL6, I think. Apologies to the defendant, but the show must go on. Right. If Vera dies, the trial will be canceled. I'm not going to let that happen. Mr. Wright told me everything that's been going on behind the curtains oh. all these years. He just sat him down, okay. I'm going to get Vera her innocent verdict while she's while there's still time. Wait, we didn't get to see the reaction of him finding out that they're siblings. I don't think Phoenix told them that. Oh, come on! <laughs> Phoenix is terrible. <laughs> Very well, your opening statement, Prosecutor Gavin. The prosecution's case is unchanged by recent events. Why did Vera Misham succumb to poison? Because she couldn't live with the guilt of what she'd done. Wow! But Vera was poisoned with atroquinine! The exact same poison that took her father's life! What better confession could you ask for? She had it on hand. Being the killer, she would have had access to the poison. Significant, since it's rather hard to come by. Hmm, that is true. In other words, I see no need for further discussion. We could have had our verdict yesterday. Well, Mr. Justice, if you have no objections, I see no reason to postpone a verdict. What we need to worry about isn't the verdict, but the trial itself! The defense holds that Vera Misham is the victim, not the killer. If that's so, then you have to prove something. She was in court, giving her testimony before us.
How do you propose her killer poisoned her? Nail polish. Oh, and incidentally, it would be nice if you told us who her mystery killer was. It's your brother! Spoiler. The prosecution's objection is sustained. I ask the defense to prove its claims to this court. Tell us how Vera Misham was poisoned. Cool! I've got two things to prove here. Who did it and how? Which to hit first? Let's do how. That's easier. How did the killer poison Vera Misham? I will focus first on the method used. Hmm. Any comments before we begin, Prosecutor Gavin? Not a bottle or container of the poison was found on the Vic defendant's body. I see. So the vector of poisoning is unknown. Is the defense prepared to prove how the poison reached Vera Misham? Yeah. Yes, Your Honor. Very well. What method was used to poison Vera Misham? Nail polish. What's this? My, what a beautiful bottle. I'd like to give whoever designed that a hand. <laughs> Is that nail polish? Hmm, it's colorless. Ah! Uh, something the matter? No, nothing. Nothing at all. It just so happens my brother's obsessed <laughs> with painting his nails. So the killer put poison in this <laughs> bottle and made her drink it? I would totally watch a reality show of the two of them living together where it's like, Oh yes, I'm the prestigious attorney and then- <laughs> 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 We have the exact same idea. Also, I think it's appropriate if we don't get the wrong stuff, really. Yeah. Because A, it's not that funny. And, and B, B, we know, we know what know. we're doing. As Prosecutor Gavin has told us, this is nail polish. Nail polish? It's like paint for nails! Know any women with red nails? Oh, my wife has red nails! I see, so she's been painting them all this time! <laughs> <laughs> Let's recall yesterday's trial. Remember when Vera was testifying to the court? Court is now back in session. Vera seems pretty tense. She's practically chewing her fingernails clean off. I was right. This you were. Oh, I'm so happy about that. Whenever Vera became nervous, she had a habit of biting her nails. Her nails? Oh my gosh. Oh! I bet Kristoff was like, the key to being, like, your secret uh, lucky charm is to bite your nails. And then he gave her that nail polish. Or he noticed that she bit her nails and gave her the nail polish anyways. Sure. Prosecutor Gavin, when the prosecution had Vera examined, did they check her nails? I, well, I... Bailiff, have them check the defendant's nails at once. Mr. Justice? <laughs> Sorry to bother you. I know you're uh, poisoned, but can we check out your nails? No, she's so unconscious. Oh, right, she's unconscious. Yes? Okay. Do you know who did this? Do you know who put poison in that nail polish? Yes. <laughs> that bottle belongs to Vera Misham. Why do you ask? Know someone else who might have a bottle like this? No. Just check in. Uh -huh. Mr. Justice, you are about to accuse someone of poisoning that bottle of nail polish. Please dispense with the chatter. You realize the weight of this accusation? Here, let me show you. Understood, Your Honor. No problem. I know what I'm doing it's this about time. This much on the penalty meter. <laughs> <laughs> He's just He's just <laughs> Keep in mind, fingers. if you are wrong, it's this, this much of the penalty. <laughs> 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 He's holding up his fingers to indicate it. I don't, that's kind of weird. Let me ask. Who poisoned Vera Misham via her nail polish? Yeah, we... Yeah. Wh what's this? Christoph Gavin? Objection! What's your game? My bro. There's no way he could do a thing like that. He's in jail! You should know that better than anyone else! Indeed. He is behind bars. I know. However, that doesn't mean it was impossible to do what he did. What? Ask yourselves when he put the poison in the bottle. It could have been yesterday. It could have been a month ago. Maybe it was a year ago. Or perhaps it was seven years ago. B but Christoph Gavin had no motive for killing this poor girl. It's simply inconceivable. Prosecutor Gavin doesn't seem to think so. That face tells me one thing. Christoph Gavin's own younger brother doesn't find it inconceivable at all. Hmm. Well, Prosecutor Gavin? My bro's an idiot. <laughs> if you feel that there is a clear and pressing need, then we may have to summon Christoph Gavin from jail as a special witness. Fine. I've known for some time that an impenetrable darkness lurked at the bottom of this. A darkness that has swallowed even myself. Okay. The defense's wish is granted. Let prisoner Christoph Gavin take the stand. Thank goodness. 
Bailiff, begin proceedings to call a special witness. The witness is Christoph Gavin, currently residing in solitary cell 13 at Central Prison. I remember because we had to kick out Morgan Faye to make room for him. Yeah. She had the nicest one ever. <laughs> <laughs> he, that was quick. <laughs> Ten hours later. <laughs> no, that was pretty quick. Ah, uh, your honor. How nice to see you again. It's been quite a while, hasn't it? To what do I owe the pleasure of your company? It's not every day I'm summoned from my sol solitary cell. In fact, it's never. <laughs> He's just full of the great lines. Yeah. I think you already know, Mr. Christoph Gavin. Ah, Mr. Justice. I hear you've been doing quite well for yourself. You got hired by a girl who wanted you to get her boyfriend guilty. <laughs> <laughs> that should be the line. <laughs> You got hired by someone who wanted her boyfriend guilty. You got hired by Phoenix Wright, my favorite person in the world. Ugh. Why do I feel like somehow he's still my boss? Still, stiff up your lip, Apollo. You can do it. Does this bottle look familiar? Aradoni nail polish? Why, yes. I use it myself. What? It's great. You can't live beautiful life without beautiful nails. <laughs> As did the late defendant, I hear. She's not dead yet! And was there something concerning this bottle you wished to ask me about? I admit I respect her for her taste in nail polish. Her taste, indeed. <laughs> this nail polish was how Vera Misham was poisoned. Atroquinine, was it? You're well informed about the case, Mr. Gavin. <laughs> I love that animation. Yeah, me so too. Good. Even in solitary, much comes to my desk. And I have nothing to do but read. It, it, what's interesting is Gavin, like, yeah, he killed somebody, but he still seems to be very well respected in the legal community. It is really funny. Where, like, they're like, oh, let's give him the nice prison cell, let's give him the nice chair, let's send all these case stuff to him, because he is smart. <laughs> and he's bored. Well, Clavier? Maybe you can explain this? You're being accused again. By him. Again. Ah, and you agree with this accusation, do you? Let's hold a proper trial, shall we? Christoph Gavin, your testimony, please. I'd be delighted. The charges against you are quite severe, Mr. Gavin, even though you're already in jail for killing somebody. <laughs> well, maybe you're executed. <laughs> you are suspected of poisoning the, of the defendant, Vera Misham. Please testify on this matter to the court. Poisoning Vera. Would you believe me if I told you this was the only testimony in the entire trial? <laughs> so what, the trial's like 30 minutes? It's pretty short. That's also, really short. Also, oh, best opening line for a testimony ever. Okay. Owning the same nail polish does not a murderer make. Yeah, that's pretty good. I have good. been in solitary confinement for half a year. How could I poison her? Earlier? Her father died of the same poison, the meaning of which should be clear. The prosecution's case holds. She poisoned her father, then attempted to poison herself. Surely you aren't going to suggest I was responsible for poisoning her father, too. Well, I know where his, uh, nervous state is whenever he pushes up his glasses. <laughs> well, I'm afraid the defense's claim is sounding rather unlikely. Naturally. For one, I don't even know the Michans. Isn't that so, Mr. Justice? Very well, Mr. Justice. Begin your cross-examination. I'm accusing Christoph Gavin, my ex-boss, again. <laughs> but I know he poisoned the Mishams. The question is, when could he have done it? Not to mention, why? Poisoning Vera. Same nail polish a murderer does not <laughs> Owning make. the same nail polish does not a murderer make. <laughs> He's, he has the best lines, like, of all the characters. Yeah. Tell me, is this nail polish expensive? Aradone is a nail polish of the highest order. Not only is it fabulously expensive, but it is made in extremely limited quantities. And you and Vera just happened to both use it! That can't be a coincidence! Objection. I'm guessing it's not a coincidence. Huh? It's simple. Aradone is the best nail polish one can buy, correct? Then if one wanted the best nail polish, one would buy it. That makes sense. Why, it's a bit like my feelings towards Taco Bell. I mean, my <laughs> brand name Gavilee. <laughs> and my silk top hat. Are we all done showing off our refined tastes? <laughs> Please continue with your tasteful testimony. If you want the best Mexican food, Taco Bell's the last place you go to. <laughs> yeah. I've been in solitary confinement for half a year. 
Good for you. Can't you still make contact with the outside world in solitary? Maybe we will have to split this into two episodes. <laughs> ah, so we had an accomplice on the outside. Is this your latest accusation? I'm allowed a certain modicum of letter writing. Objective. But the contents of those letters are closely checked. It would be extremely difficult to send a hit request. Prosecutor Gavin's on the warpath, isn't he? Yeah, you think so too, Trucy? I bet I know why. He must be nervous with Big Brother watching. Hmm, maybe that's a weakness I can turn to my advantage. Are we cool with that? May I continue? Are they twins, by the way? Or no, are they the he's, he's the older brother. Christoph's so they just the happen to have the same hair and the same hair flock. Yes, it's genetic. Okay, that doesn't happen. The either. defendant is not dead yet! There are no known cases of someone surviving atroquinine poisoning. You seem to know a lot about atroquinine. <laughs> Again. I know a lot about a lot of things. Which is why I suggest we pick up the pace. Or else you'll be short one defendant, for what she's worth. The witness will refrain from speaking ill of the... ill. My apologies. Shall I continue? The prosecution's case holds. <laughs> Vera had no reason to want to commit suicide. And also, who would commit suicide by doing their nails? <laughs> the answer is quite simple. Basically, allow me to explain. Beginning with, why did she do it? The answer is quite simple. She couldn't live with her own guilt. Next, why did she use nail polish to poison herself? This too is simple. So she could die doing something that she liked. Something that she liked? Once she saw that the trial wasn't going her way, she knew she would die. And it's not easy to bring poison into a courtroom. Must I explain further? Hmm, I believe that's clear enough. Crystal clear. Wow, the two brothers together is like a two-man wrecking team. They could use a little more teamwork, though. <laughs> Surely you aren't so going to suggest I was responsible for poisoning your father, dude. Both Vera and Mr. Misham were poisoned with atroquinine. Is this gonna be the same thing that I thought before where it's like, BAM! Someone breaks through the window. <laughs> and then poisons it and then leaves. BAM! Crab pants! That really can't be a coincidence. Hey! The defense is repeating fallacious statements based on conjecture. The prosecution requests concrete, unambiguous proof of the witness's crime. Uh, objection sustained. The defense will please present concrete proof. Does Prosecutor Gavin seem strange to you, too? It's like he's all grown up. I think that's how prosecutors are supposed to be, actually. Though he is acting different than usual. I'll bet it has a lot to do with his brother Kristoff being in the room. Well, let's make this testimony count, Apollo. Right. Quick and painless. My bracelet should do the trick. Okay, I'm questioning my ex-boss. <laughs> his testimony seems watertight, but he's lying. I'm sure I'll be able to see something, as long as I focus. I also just realized that oh, my initial- No, I didn't want to press hold it, I wanted to press bracelet. Yeah. I just realized <laughs> that the, the, um, my initial idea of, like, somebody breaks through the window is almost like the, Hey! Riot! Riot! <laughs> and then they just beat each other Let's up. see his beautiful face up close. His eyes are so slanted. Indeed. Sorry, uh, you think it's the, uh... It's the one where he's pressing his glasses. Okay. Oh, that's the only oh one. I want to see this tilted pose up. Yeah, I do too. Because his mouth. He looks like Mr. Stewart. He up looks close. like Mr. Stewart. Nobody knows who Mr. Stewart is. Big fan of your mom. Big fan of your mom. <laughs> that's going to be our new vein. Yeah. Yeah, what's cool is you can kind of fast forward through it by doing perceive, cancel, perceive, cancel. That is cool. Good All thing right. we learned that right at the end. Alright. It's fine. This is like the easiest thing to perceive yeah. in the oh, whole wow. game. And also he's glaring at you behind those. Oh. That's kind of creepy. Ugh! One eye looks worse than the other. Yeah. Where do you think it is? Him touching his nose? Did his eyes just change? No. He just looks creepy with it like this. Every time he does this pose, he's glaring at you. So when you rewatch them, that'll be funny. Oh, there. His fingers were moving. No, no. Yeah, yeah. He was touching... I saw the shadows move. 
Oh, were they? Oh. I think so. Wait, let me... Maybe my eyes are totally playing tricks. <laughs> or maybe it's the veins. Whoa! Whoa! Dude, you're moving your hands so much I can see your bones. It was you who killed Drew Misham. A bluff worthy of your new mentor, Mr. Wright. Oh, really? But you see, I saw it. Right when you said her father, too. Your hand tensed unnaturally, and a little devil appeared to give me the news. Yeah, because he had a scar on his hand, and it looks like a devil's face when he, like, does the flex. Oh, I didn't even notice that. It, yeah, so, like, you see, like, my two fingers there? Yeah. Like, when he does that, yeah. they kind of contort to make, like, eyes, and he has a scar right there, so it's like a, a monster's mouth. A devil's like, face? Oh. Which is kind of creepy, but also kind of awesome. Yeah. That explains a lot. And let's assume for the sake of the argument that you saw me being tense. What does that mean? Are all tense witnesses guilty? I mean, he has a point! He has a point! It's just like, <laughs> it doesn't vein. work. This is the thing. A lot of, even when Kristoff's being a huge butt, and like, he's like evil, like, he, he, he puts up a lot of he's good points. He's so smart. <laughs> he is incredibly smart. And that's but one not, of the things, this is not, what makes Kristoff one of my favorite villains, and also one of the most legitimately terrifying villains. He's not villains. smart, though, in like, the annoying way. Right, he's, he's just intelligent. Just, he's just intelligent. I, th I personally think Kristoff is the scariest villain in the series. Really? Just, just as a whole, especially as the, tr the trial goes on. Okay, maybe as the trial goes on. And tell me, was Drew Misham fond of nail polish too? Sorry, but there's more than one way to poison a man. You don't need nail polish to get to someone's mouth. Ah. Then I must be very talented indeed. You see, Drew Misham was killed on October 6th. While I was already in solitary confinement cell at the Central Prison. If that's not an alibi, then I don't know what is. But you found a way all the same. And I found it too. Oh, I haven't really seen that face. This is how you poison Mr. Misham. Yeah, he gets a couple new faces in this trial, and they is are Is it gonna be like creepy. Piglet's box face? <laughs> no, his faces are all fairly natural looking, but just like sinister. Yeah. Which is awesome. I still think probably my, the scariest villain I've seen so far was either Von Karma or Iris. So, you mean Dahlia? Yeah, Dahlia being exercised. Not Matt Ongard with the scar face. <laughs> oh, he was also pretty terrifying. Okay, Kristoff's a different kind of terrifying, yeah. though. He's terrifying than the just like, holy cow, someone like this could exist. And he's crazy smart, and it's really hard to convict him of anything, basically. Yeah. It's more the psychological. Yes. I'm sure this commemorative stamp requires no introduction. The night Mr. Misham died, he was seen writing a letter. Atroconine was found on this stamp, Mr. Gavin. So am I to understand this stamp was the murder weapon? Yes, you are. Oh, and yes, this stamp was found in your prison cell. Oh, I thought there was going to be psych locks for a sec. No, that's just how the perceived thing ends. Nice cufflinks. Yeah, they're pretty good. That is all, Your Honor. Oh, he's fatter than I... <laughs> How is he fatter after going to jail? <laughs> I told you, Taco Bell is in the building. <laughs> in, in jail? Order, no, order, like, order. Half the population would be in jail. Put poison on the back of that stamp? After Drew Mission was killed, someone paid a visit to the witness's cell. Phoenix Wright. Daddy? That's when he found the stamp. You made Drew Misham write you a letter. That's how you killed him. Literally, we would not have convicted Kristoff if he wasn't, like, in the bathroom. That is literally <laughs> the was just camping, being like, Kristoff is gonna have to use the bathroom at some point in the day. I saw him jug, jug the big Baja, Mountain Dew Baja Blast from Taco Bell <laughs> earlier. <laughs> literally, that's the only reason we did this, was because we were able to sneak oh, in. Oh, and you know what's sad? We don't get to hear the pursuit theme, I don't think, in this trial. Oh, whatever. What? My, my. You've upset my poor brother to the point of uselessness. Allow me to clarify this matter, Justice. All you need to do is recall witness Spark Brushel's testimony. How do you know it? He gets the case files, basically. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that's the thing, see? After he put his letter in that envelope, Mr. Misham sat there searching his desk drawer for something. His desk drawer? Yes, a stamp. A so-called postage stamp, end quote. However, though, this dude must have gotten the, the files, what, like 10 minutes ago? 
<laughs> like, they had to summon him and then be like, Here's He was the reading case. them in the background. Okay. <laughs> in reality, that's just what he was doing. He was looking for a stamp. Ergo, he had no intention of using this stamp. What are you getting at? What I'm arriving at is that this commemorative stamp was in a frame. It was mere coincidence that he used it that night. That would seem to be the case. Or perhaps you mean to suggest that I can somehow manipulate coincidence? He does have a point. How would this witness know if the victim was going to use that stamp? Without that, he couldn't have planned the murder. What? Really, Cartier? You should be seen through these weak spine bluffs by now. Poor Clavier. He's right, though. How could anyone have known Mr. Mission would use that stamp that night? Least of all, Christoph Gavin locked away in his cell. Hmm, well... It seems that the defense has run out of things to say. You assume he had something to say in the first place. I believe the defense's bluff has been called. The defense's bluff? I'm not sure I agree with you there, Christoph. Clavier? Honestly, I wanted to believe you. But the defense wasn't trying to get away with a bluff. You were, Kristoff! What are you saying? Prosecutor Gavin? I'm gonna become a defense attorney. Air Forehead, what was your accusation again? Huh? Oh, it was that... This poison stamp killed Drew Misham. Yeah. To which my brother responded thusly. There was no way to know when Misham would use the stamp. Yes, that's right! Which is why it couldn't have been planned. Tell me, it needs to be planned? Why? Uh, why couldn't it have been a coincidence? The defense's case is simply that Drew Misham died by that stamp. That's all. Coincidence? Christoph, you tried to slip out from under his accusation by changing the subject. If that's not bluffing, what is it? What are you up to, Clavier? I could ask you the same question, Christoph. <laughs> I silence the defense with the fewest words possible. It's called efficiency. But, but Mr. Gavin, that's impermissible testimony. Very well. I shall take his claim head on then. Justice. W what? You accuse me of Drew Misham's murder, yes? Then, allow me to ask you. What possible reason could I have to kill a painter? Apollo, motive! He's talking about a motive! Hmm, indeed. It's hard to see how an attorney could come to want to kill a painter. Now here's something. Why didn't he bring up the motive from the very beginning? Unless he was afraid it was a battle he might lose. So, what does it mean? It means there might be a weak spot. Maybe I have some evidence to prove a motive. A motive for murder? This is a vital, if not the most vital element in this case. Please consider this when making your statement. I'd say it's about... This vital. See, my fingers, this, this vital. vital. This much of your penalty bar, you'll lose if you get it wrong. That's pretty vital. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. Justice, I'm going through with this no matter what. Understood, Your Honor. I'd like to present evidence. Then let's see what you have for us. What reason did Christoph Gavin have for wanting to murder Drew Misham? 